few things to work, hopefully. Uh, can you hear me, Carol? Yeah. Ah, perfect. Okay. And um, I will try to see if we can also share screen. Okay. Okay. Start sharing the screen. So if you all can see the background, uh, that will help you. I'm trying to clean the script things when necessary going. Uh, can you do it? Uh, I see. I SPI Global Network. Perfect. Great. So there we are. Uh, then we have uh, almost all we we're here and uh, we are with us. So and um, okay, <laughs> let's start from the beginning. I guess I should start asking you how are you doing. <laughs> Got it. Anyway. Oh, uh, it's it's kind of interesting on on this end between ISPI EMEA and IFTDO. Yeah, mm. so there aren't enough hours in the day. Mm. But uh, I did uh, take a, a few minutes to look through the uh, uh, the links. When one of which was to the ISPI Global Network. Okay. Uh, but I have to admit, I I didn't do a lot more than uh, than go through it, and I I read that blog post that had mm. uh, a little PowerPoint embedded in it. Oh yeah, yeah. I sent that message just in general for ISPI. Well, let me let me put together uh, the, the previous conversations. I had conversations in Barcelona with uh, Monique Müller. Uh -huh. Because I was just, I couldn't make it to Bonn, but I could right. make it to Europe. So uh -huh. taking advantage that uh, Monique was visiting her mother uh, and I was visiting my sister. So uh -huh. in a way back from Cyprus, so I, I just uh, had a chance to talk with her. I also had uh, then in the same time zone, uh, longer conversations with Klaus. Uh -huh. um, about all, all of them were about uh, the immediate thing was the Kaufman Award, but award, but uh, and the ISPI problems we all know. But also, let me let me just take my my camera off so we, we run less risk of uh, of missing the uh, the connection. You see, uh, um, the, the basic point there was. Um, that uh, we uh, discussed with Klaus and everybody seemed to be okay in the idea of we have uh, ISPI facing with the current model a financial crisis, but also a, I would say, a, a long, a long crisis we all know um, regarding the financial viability and also the attractiveness of the single conference in the U.S or around right. uh, once a year. Uh, I had some opportunity during my time at the board and then with close recently to, to discover, look at the numbers and it seems that 80% of the budget of the society goes into the conference. And, um, and break even is the best they can do, uh, put in the conference and the um, people they need to in order to to produce a conference uh, every year. Uh, right. It's, it's like... And, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> they're, they're as you had, had mentioned in your uh, PowerPoint, I think it was, mm -hmm. they, they continue to work on, uh, on a model that was already um, in trouble years ago. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I know before I was on the board mm -hmm. that... Uh, I think it was Dale Brethauer's board had had mm. done some work on uh, diversifying revenue streams so that everything wasn't dependent on conferences, which is, uh, I mean, it was 100% uh, focused on conferences. So they they did some work on that, but uh, I I'm not sure that it really took. Uh, however, as you as you look at what they've 
uh, what they've continued to do. When I was on the board, 1,200 was break even, uh, and yeah. now the the most that they're getting is five or six hundred people, uh, and it, mm -hmm. it speaks to your point about mm -hmm. uh, virtual uh, ways to uh, to work together on the board, uh, virtual connections mm -hmm. to uh, to events, uh, yeah. uh, different kinds of events, not just one conference and one size fits all. And even at that, when, when you, you look at the conference model that uh, they keep uh, following, it's, uh, it's the old, you know, if we build it, they will come, yeah. uh, which doesn't work anymore. Uh, it did work years ago because there wasn't any other way to get directly engaged with other professionals, no less uh, thought leaders and, uh, mm -hmm. and folks like that. And, and that's one of the reasons why our little um, ISPI EMEA conference does work because there it presents a reason for being there. The other the other kind of conference model that ISPI is still holding on to, uh, you could phone it in. Um, you could look at YouTube and have wearing your fuzzy slippers listen to uh, to people <laughs> and and even interact with them. Uh, Mm -hmm. and to some extent virtually in these uh, these big events. Uh, so there, if you're going to have conferences, one, your, your idea where there would be conferences uh, regionally, quarterly, or, you know, even more frequently, you have to – one of the things that ISPI never does is the market research mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to, f to find out what people – uh, want and what they they feel would be supportive of their own personal development and professional development goals. Uh, so you know, is it uh, you know would they be interested in uh, in more local conferences or regional conferences? I mean, there is value in people going outside of their their own local area, but uh, with with Big ISPI, there the conferences are are yeah they move around the states but they're in the states yeah uh, which yeah. is you know contrary to the whole idea of international uh, yeah. it's never international uh, going to Canada almost doesn't count <laughs> because it's as as somebody said in a movie once it's like attached <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And there are some proposals actually for uh, annexing or <laughs> yeah, exactly, a... exactly right. Uh, so, so I, you know, I certainly uh, agree with you uh, in general about uh, the the fundamental uh, issues. And I, I mean, I was really delighted to uh, to see that our uh, uh, simulation client. Mm -hmm. Through their through yeah. their donor, had reached out to um, to John regarding. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a crazy thing that they did to do it that way, but you know whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, when they reached out about the yeah. um, you know following through with the um, uh, recommendations or the the ideas that were put together in the proposal, I mean that. The, ISPI me is making a difference and really connecting people to real stuff, not sitting in a room listening to somebody granted who has a lot of skills, experience, mm -hmm. and um, and value to share. But but still, it's very passive, and you could get that staying at home and watching it on YouTube. Yes, yes, and and the proof is in the pudding. Uh, ISPI me awards because we. This is a perfect example. Uh, the the global network works. We we uh, establish uh, and we deliver in Colombia, Mexico. Uh, all these things were offerings of uh, some activities of uh, starting by, through the global network and then branching out to specific countries. My uh, uh, idea was during some time, and it's exactly ten years since I left the board. Um, uh, 
I tried during my time in the board to 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 see if uh, ISPI could embrace these ideas, and I discovered that what happened is uh, there was no continuity, even if they were uh, that they didn't, but if, if they were in agreement to discuss a real strategy point, uh, there, there was no way for a board, a, a transient board, to gar guarantee anything longer than uh, a year. Uh, right. That's the what the, the problem Klaus uh, is facing now. He's uh, more than well-intentioned and now for what he's trying to do, but we don't have any guarantee that the next president will, will be able to carry out and carry through whatever he started. So right. I thought... Well, and, and, and yeah. I'm sorry to, sure. to interrupt you, but just to your, to your point hmm. about uh, transient board and going mm -hmm. forward, and that's exactly right. And compounding that is mm -hmm. the, where the continuity should be coming from is uh, the, the executive director who mm -hmm. hasn't in years has not been anyone who has anything to do with our profession yeah yeah what we have is, is a conference or a, a coordinator it's a wedding wedding planner at the best yeah <laughs> yes. that's what we have and the weddings are kind of <laughs> yeah, not yeah exactly kind I know of better shotgun wedding, affairs yeah. yeah yeah we are we are downscaling our weddings uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we still get the rubber chicken <laughs> yeah, yeah right exactly we're having uh, wedding lunches instead of dinners or something. <laughs> yes, yeah. So uh, uh, then I discover, uh, and this happened recently. I have my my road to Damascus was uh, I went to Cyprus, and I I was talking already with Klaus. Then I met uh, Monique, and then uh, we talk about you, Carol, and uh, then I realized uh, that was my my moment of. Uh, inside and it was wow actually uh, what we have been doing is the 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 the, the tail is wagging the dog that's so the right conference exactly uh, isp is so absorbed with saving the the conference and making the conference this year that there is always not never next year it's just this year so uh, and trying to modify that from inside is kind of impossible or improductive and frustrating. A lot of talented people, much more talented than I, try and every, everybody you can see is insane. So I said, okay, but we have branched out. What if we do it anyway? And <clears throat> at the same time, so we try to help the most we can, um, the more we can, uh, the ISPI uh, uh, current, but we try to, to bring together and interconnect more ISPI EMEA, the former virtual the former virtual chapter with all the chapters in Latin America and mm -hmm. trying to offer a platform that will uh, bridge the current ISPI to a model that makes more sense for everybody that mm -hmm. allows everybody to uh, to make more visible events for example uh, I know about ISPI EMEA events through uh, my six degrees of separation. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, the the Banyard tells me, oh, they are going to Bonn and uh, mm -hmm. oh, they are in Prague. Or, uh, of course, I have a Roger, I have John, and we have each other. Uh, but, um, and we are doing things, for example, like a conference in Colombia or now I'm going to Buenos Aires where we won, we created or recreated for the first time a ISPA chapter, but we are trying to get to a, a, a project going on. <clears throat> and I thought, well, those things, the channel, the, ISP, the, the whole virtual chapter could be the vessel for a, just channeling, not just what we did uh, in the chapters, but as ISPA Global to offer space and room to uh, create a circuit of conferences that could be webinar based or web based uh, on a more regular basis that will uh, stay in uh, for longer time. So, for example, you cannot attend to, let's assume that, um, let's take Bonn, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 
you are in Bonn, you have all the material uh, discussed in Bonn, you, you can uh, make videos of the sessions in Bonn uh, and then upload that at YouTube. We can put it and it's, this is Bonn. And if you want to participate at Bonn and the topics discussed in Bonn, uh, you can keep a, a live uh, section for a discussion or blog type and uh, you can pay to uh, ISPI EMEA uh, through uh, this section for access to the Bonn experience, the, uh, the you know, Prague experience. The, so all these reservoirs of uh, things that have been done can be shared by larger audiences and you can even have a live stream for people who cannot go to Bonn but want to participate in certain activities um, with a common frame that is what we have uh, e-performance uh, standing mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't require any uh, initial investment from anybody because we already have it running mm -hmm. so we can also organize courses through Blackboard uh, with also zero cost uh, with video with uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the former Adobe Connect in, insert. So each one of the, the idea would be, the, the main idea was instead of having 1% uh, of the, all the experts of ISPI network available for three days, at best 90 minutes, um, once a year, what about having all the experts available uh, in conference format uh, every two months and in uh, virtual uh, different activities available constantly 24 7 in a single place so they can yeah. go there uh, yeah, and, uh, and we can send the financial resources to each one of the experts through the uh, e-commerce systems uh, paypal etc so that that is the easiest problem as opposed to having staff to do that kind of stuff um so well, we've proven that the staff doesn't work uh, yeah it's, it's not a, <laughs> you know it's not something that works starting at the top yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh you know just going along with what what mm. you were saying mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that happened when we first began the uh you know, using the uh, what you call it the uh, simulation as the core of our conferences uh, that actually began uh, at uh, a big ISPI annual conference as uh, something that an idea that came out of the international room uh, we did a lot of things in the yeah. international room that uh, that big ISPI put a stop to uh, that that people the international folks and and by international folks I include the Americans in that hmm. uh, really valued but uh, when we first started doing the simulation uh, we were we began talking with uh, Tony Marker from Boise and uh, and then we got uh, Adolf Theron from uh, from Africa uh, was part of the conversation, and we were working on a concept where, apart from the from a conference, so uh, the point is that you can have different kinds of events. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from a conference, we could create an event that where that was a partnership between. Uh, uh, the ISPI group, in our case, ISPI EMEA, uh, with a university who would would host with their facilities and and also involve their faculty members, uh, something that was limited in uh, in scope in terms of the numbers of people that could actually join and be a real. Uh, undertaking a, some real analysis work, uh, working with local government, 
because the university is much more able to get local government to say, yes, I'll do something, and local government is going to open their books like no for-profit organization. But our thought was that we could have a series of, of those events where you uh, partnered with the university. The university would, you know, at, uh, host the be the host venue uh, mm -hmm. and have have presenters and all that kind of stuff as well as the, the simulation actually be able to go to the simulation client and all of that would be something that ran separately uh, in addition to yes. our conferences uh, mm -hmm. and that's just one of the ideas that that we came up with so I agree with you that there should be more things and uh, more things that attract more people, and to your point about mm -hmm. being able to access uh, these uh, these kinds of events, like the ISBI co uh, conferences now, uh, what we already have is a library of feedback reports, and those feedback reports aren't just you know a list of what people said. It uh, describes the the conference and the flow of the conference. And uh, and has uh, has feedback from unsolicited from emails, and as well as from our uh, directly from people that uh, that are at the conference, as well as our uh, feedback session at the end of the conference. And we also have a video, not the kind of video that you were talking about, where where whole sessions. Uh, would be uh, videoed, though that's one of the things we talked about at the end of uh, the Bond Conference. Uh, but we already have uh, those kinds of things. Well, uh, one valuable thing that that we haven't been uh, sharing to anyone outside of the the conference uh, folks is the um, the proposals developed by the um, the simulation teams, uh, the mm -hmm. consulting teams, uh, but but those those are issues of you know just getting people's uh, acknowledgement and approval to to share those kinds of things, uh, but they they could be a library of resources uh, for for people to to. Uh, to review, certainly not as robust as what you were talking about, but that's the kind of thing you could talk about for uh, going forward. What what parts should be accessible and make sense to be accessible outside of the conference, and uh, uh, is there a way to make more of the conference available virtually? Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you don't have to have a hundred percent of it, uh, but for example, the senior executive panel is uh, is a really valuable session, and uh, and I could see that having a, a virtual component. So it's a little harder uh, to to involve people in the simulation, uh, in my personal uh, opinion. However, uh, saying that. People could be who were not there could be involved virtually in having the uh, the simulation presented uh, and you know doing the bidders conference with the the client uh, and then certainly to to be able to view real time the proposals that were presented mm -hmm. and the feedback from the client. I yes. think it's stretching it a bit to have the people on teams and because uh, their experience is different and their interaction is uh, it's, it's tougher to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, that, that's Carol, this is oh. Carol. This is John. Um, I, I certainly, I certainly think that um, I would would agree with you that the the uh, the senior pan the senior executive panel discussions are worth having available both real time as well as um, sure after the fact yeah. after after the fact for you know either either gratis or or for a price um, I also think that as you're saying uh, there's great value in in being able to see how things get played out um, 
for the case study, the, the, the case study simulation, including the presentation, including the feedback, and even doing uh, follow-up interviews with some of the some of the team member uh, participants. Sure. That's yeah. that that's part of this. So you get a, you get the whole experience. It be, it becomes it, it actually becomes uh, an annual case study simulation documentary. Yeah. Uh, well, that, and the the the, the beauty of of this is that we could actually uh, ha, you know keep our ISPI uh, EMEA region uh, yeah. and 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 see who we could work with to create the same thing in uh, in two or three or more other regions that mm -hmm. were that might be oh, interested. Ab absolutely. In, in the model, um, and uh, and letting us build that kind of thing, because uh, the the whole idea behind uh, ISPI EMEA and, and and where we have uh, moved it over the years is to to have an experience and an exchange of information that is a true learning and sharing. Um, event for everyone, whether you're a presenter or not, uh, and that that those are the kinds of experiences that make it worthwhile for you to throw your body on a plane and take the time, because it takes more time if you have to travel to and from it, uh, to uh, to be there and to participate. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And you know, and I. I I really think that they have to remain small. If you try to make it the ISPI annual conference, uh, well, well, they've they've tried to they've tried to do um, ISPI EMEA stuff um, in the last few years. Uh, but the, for example, the first time that they did um, a senior executive type panel, they did it at lunchtime. The lights were turned down. There were no windows. Um, and the round table, so half of everybody that was there was facing the back of the room, not the people who were speaking, and they were serving lunch. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I can't even think of anything else they could have done to make it worse. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I, I really think that, that some of the things that we've done could certainly be embedded. I would really uh, think that that they they ought to uh, to think about what we had done with the old international room because that's where that's where we first started getting real feedback. I mean, you have to forgive me. I have a marketing background, and it drives me crazy <laughs> that that the customer, the the uh, the participants uh, and the presenters are never really considered it's just we've got this model and we're going to mm -hmm. send out our call for proposals we're going to keep doing what we've always done because we're us and we're great uh, you know it's just idiotic yeah. but you know we first started asking people on um, how you know what was good uh, what could be improved and just what are some other ideas yeah that we can consider I mean it's really simple stuff but mm -hmm. it makes a difference. One of the things that we we have gotten as informal feedback many many t from many many quarters uh, in the last few years is just about that. That it's the only conference where uh, not only do do you ask people what they thought uh, and you know what was good and what you know needs improvement and you know suggestions for the future, but but we also always act on it yeah. uh, in one way or another. So, you know, I, I think that that you always have to go back to those kinds of roots. And, you know, and I, I think what I've been saying, it was really embedded in, in what your presentation presented also, Mariano, mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, there, there isn't a single cookie cutter thing. Yeah. Uh, that that's going to, to last for a hundred years, but the what underlies our model is that uh, that people get really involved and engaged, and you're not just uh, just listening to people tell you stuff. You're actually trying it, but in a safe environment, 
So you're actually, exactly. if you choose to to work on a team, and you don't even have to work on a team to get value out of it. If you if you participate and you listen to the presentations and to the feedback, uh, uh, you there's something for uh, for everyone that that is active, and even our conference sessions uh, are always uh, a much more uh, of an ISBI EMEA culture. I, I can't term it anybody's in particular culture, it's our culture where you know, uh, our participants are as valuable uh, and as knowledgeable as our presenters and they have a lot to, uh, to contribute via their questions and comments um, during all sessions. Yes, uh, I, I, you know, I'm writing down, but by the way, uh, Carol, I'm taping all this uh, and I will send it to you so mm -hmm. we, we can remember because sometimes uh, uh, there are a ton of great ideas and uh, and we get chasing one and maybe we, we miss the other one. But um, here I'm writing down things you mentioned is ISPI EMEA, um, you know, has a, a structure, is working, is, is being successful, and it has also the idea of a, a library of cases. I, I started showing, uh, while you were speaking, some of the uh, websites we have been creating. For example, uh, the, the library is basically a center where you can access uh, not just uh, articles, but uh, materials that have to do with a different uh experiences and can include um uh, feedback or uh, these other elements um the idea of uh have a one week common theme person to person experience for but maybe more than once a year but um also uh, the uh the idea that this is driven not by us but by uh things that matter to the region um in and uh presenting follow-up or giving a uh, way to follow up uh, when i was showing the uh the um the uh the blog was basically to to show what we did uh or what someone did and what what's going on with that experience what did we learn results and effects and uh also fostering teams and network that share that experience because that time share, whether personally or even participating the way we are doing now, uh, but working together during a certain time creates bonds like the ones that, that John uh, brought from, from Bonn. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I was thinking additionally, my experience is a, what I would call global, global and local. Mm -hmm. The idea right. is having boots on the ground, what we did, and I'm showing here one example that this is program city doctors. Mm -hmm. I went to Cyprus and I had the opportunity to be an uh, observer, observer in, a, in a futurizer. This is a, a conference uh, of multiple universities from St. Petersburg uh, Netherlands to Buenos Aires, Argentina. I was representing the Technological Institute of Buenos Aires, a sort of an MIT of Argentina, mm -hmm. that it wants to create a lab, a social lab. That's one of the things I'm going to do now in November when I go back there to see if we can make it work, as we did in Mexico, but with different tones. And one thing I discovered there, they had all kinds of problems like the, the, that. this that you said. It was conceived in one way, but nobody felt entirely comfortable, uh, not the, nonetheless, by the fact that most of the people were from Eastern Europe and uh, some of them had an interpreter because they, they couldn't speak English, so they, they were translated to Russian English that I will never understand how could they resist <laughs> six days translating nonstop. <laughs> I said I want I want a, a, a brain transplant uh, if I have an accident <laughs> from that guy, please write his number. <laughs> and um, but one interesting thing was uh, the second day uh, there was turmoil, and I was 
because I had no session no whatsoever, I was just contacting and going from one room to another. And then I, I went with a group I was interested because of this program, City Doctors, that is connected with, with, with what we did in Panama City, in Colón City, Panama, mm -hmm. uh, this turning around city. So uh, this was an architecture from, from Netherlands that had a model to work in the communities and to scout and analyze. So they offered to get out of the conference uh, and go and explore one city in Cyprus that was within walking distance. So we did. And we went there with the Russians and uh, uh, let's say 15, 20 people. And we did dedicated the entire morning until lunch to interview people in the city and figure out what, what was the city going through. It was going through a lot of things, but those are not relevant for this. The idea was we came back and then that night I got together, I got invited to, to a, you know, a, a, a organizers a meeting. They were very concerned. I, I suggested them, why don't we do for the conference what you did with this? So get the people out of the fucking building and mm -hmm. let's apply whatever we are discussing to a prototype that could be Pila, this small town that we have in Cyprus. Uh, and that way we can work together in discussing different topics, but related with a local application. And it worked wonderfully. Uh, yeah. So much that they, they plan to do that. Uh, so if we go, for example, we go to Montreal and I'm trying, uh, I, I got one architect, uh, a Canadian architect, and she's working on cities as well. That is uh, uh, British Columbia, but I was thinking, okay, uh, one interesting thing is taking one topic and inviting people and applying the topic to the local uh, situation. It's not necessarily something that the locals require, but everybody joins in going, uh, doing the, some field work. Let's put it. Mm -hmm. That will justify also uh, traveling to places like Cyprus. Right. Where, where you think, oh, what are you going to do in Cyprus? Well, it's interesting because Cyprus is half Greek, half Turkish, has United Nations in the middle, and they are uh, um, suffering the consequences of the Greek uh, meltdown. So they have plenty of problems uh, that we can work uh, on um, that connect with different things that these universities do. So just dedicating half day to uh, to scout the place bringing the place as a case study and working on the whatever we bring uh, applied to the case is a way to make everybody have something to share and uh, that's i thought that's another way to do it but mm -hmm. going to what you said i think what we could do is to i would like to Number one, offering the platform that we already had to bring all the information uh, about what ISPI EMEA is doing. And uh, as, I, as part of ISPI Global as well, meaning we are ISPI, but right. we branch it out. And, and, and you define, you meaning you and all people involved in ISPI EMEA, where, how you want to um, appear in the different sections I, I will send you more organized the places we have so we can start uh, looking for what what is already there so we, we learn more about what each one is doing um, more more systematically the other thing is maybe to build some common agenda with some common ex uh, let's 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 try one thing uh, a prototype let's say during uh, 2017, say, okay, we are going to try to do something together uh, to test it. For example, it, uh, the, of all these initiatives, maybe which one is the one that makes more sense for you? And we try to do it um, and learn from it um, without going through the entire process of ISPI central that goes, as you know, uh, into, yeah. um, into a, a, <laughs> a perfect grinder. So well, just, frankly, that's, mm -hmm. that's part of how 
mm. I, ISPI EMEA came to be okay. because mm-hmm. big ISPI really does not support, I mean, it only marginally supports the local U.S. chapters, but it certainly doesn't uh, support, that model doesn't work outside of the U.S. very well, at least it doesn't work very well, it didn't in the past. Uh, and that combined with the fact that we were trying to do some innovative things that, uh, you know, with uh, with the, the case study that started out not having a real live client, it was a real client, but it was a, a case that was already done. It was a project that was already done. Um, and, uh, you know, they just gave us so much uh, trouble and um, went to great lengths to shut down the, the international room uh, that we just said, well, you know what, we'll just, we'll just do uh, what we can to provide something of value. We'll, we're certainly still um, ISPI, but we, we're going to, uh, and not even worry about not asking permission, uh, but, you know, asking forgiveness. We won't even try mm-hmm. to do that. We're just going to do our own thing. And yeah. we, in the process, have uh, just in the, in the last number of years, though we keep our rates uh, purposefully low and we give – uh, dramatic discounts to developing or emerging economies. With all of that, we have been able, by good management, uh, to uh, uh, construct, uh, create, uh, save up uh, reserves that mm. allow us to put uh, deposits down on uh, for example, we're working on our 2017 conference in Bologna, Italy, and we've got to pay our uh, our first deposit, uh, you know, like next week. Uh, but come to ISBI has been holding that money um, for us, and though we have asked them time and time and time and time again to. Uh, to give us the account number that it should be a segregated separate account. They have never done that. Mm. And uh, yet they do reflect that we had like $50,000 in our reserves, Mm. which allows us when, when it makes sense to be in a location where, where we know we'll uh, break even or possibly lose money um, without worry if if that's a good decision to make for the value to to people and to the growth and development of um, a future events but apparently ISPI has intermingled that money um, even though they somewhere keep a note of how much they owe us uh, and uh, and right now it seems that they have uh, they have spent some of that money. Oh my we're, goodness! We're still trying to find out how much. Oh. That kind of stuff makes me crazy. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. I can imagine. Yeah, um, which which is also again the, the the tail wagging the dog, the wag the dog approach is that. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's ex- exactly the analogy. We we are making money. They are uh, they called. Uh, just to add uh, insult to injury, I will add you this example because I, I formed this. Uh, well, here you have uh, in this page, uh, I put some of the members. Uh, you you will not recognize some of the faces there. Yeah, uh, I've been looking at them. <laughs> uh, okay, and and uh, what what we did basically is uh, we we created these chapters: Argentina, Colombia, Panama, Mexico, and Spain. And then there was this call from Los Wittgen to all chapters to talk about uh, the future year and, and said, well, this is a great opportunity for all the new directors of all the new chapters to get the opportunity to talk with Klaus. Uh-huh. And then comes Klaus, but before Klaus comes someone who's uh, in the business of making the next conference happen, starting to describe, and Klaus himself was describing the dire financial straits of the society. So I was inviting people basically to a speech by the captain <laughs> of the Titanic. Oh, uh, my God. Them, 
Look, yeah. you're trying to get people energized, and you give them the story of how you're yeah. facing you financial can, collapse. Exactly. But you can, but you can get a great deck chair at a, at a reduced price. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what what a way to uh, to get enthusiasm! What a way to introduce the value of coming together. Yes, exactly. That, it was oh my like God. so. I I made a, another another meeting with Klaus separately, so they could. Uh, talk about other things. So, uh, but but exactly that kind of thing is was what I was I thinking when I invite these people to participate. It's like uh, inviting them to to a, to a, um, you know awake. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Exactly. Well, well, that Klaus did the same thing at the end of our conference. He uh, he came to me and said that he really wanted to, uh, and that was the first I knew about uh, the dimensions of what was going on with uh, with ISPI, but he was telling me the story and I just looked at him and I said, Klaus, are you telling me that, uh, that they have spent our money? No. Uh, and he said, well, he said, um, in essence, um, yes, if you asked for the money that uh, that's attributable to ISPI EMEA, they wouldn't be able to give it to you. Jeez. We're not even sure we're going to make it till the end of the year. I mean, do, did I really want to hear that? But then he goes and he tells everybody at yeah. this meeting in a, in a bid for getting people to donate. And I, I mean, it, what a way to end our conference. Exactly. I was mortified. Well, exactly, and and this kind of thing uh, happens because, of course, poor Klaus, he he's trying with a German serious mind to put uh, order in chaos, uh, but he doesn't know he that he has also a German ear team, so he he's not aware of the impact. When I told him about the impact, he he was immediately responsive, but it was uh, after the fact. So mm -hmm. the idea yeah. is. Uh, if we can put together a program, a joint program for next year, mm -hmm. uh, explore what we have. I want to learn more about ISPI EMEA in order to, to put that front and center in the places that you think uh, it will be helpful to, to know. Because also between Latin America, to give an example, and we have a, a, a Spanish uh, chapter, uh, and ISPI EMEA are uh, a lot of uh, references because they are common investments, etc. Right. Um, it goes without saying that experiences like Rwanda or all the things that could come out of that could be also another great opportunity to increase and spread uh, and multiply. Uh, again, with in the case of what we do, uh, the we 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 basically operate with zero top budget, meaning we basically uh, this this entire set of websites depend of of what my company does in other ways to 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 work. But we think this is a marketing investment, and mm -hmm. it's important for for marketing to multiply, not to divide. Meaning right. that uh, if you do well, uh, and and we we are in a network, uh, sooner or later things will go better also for us. And mm -hmm. this is a perfect example. Uh, I mean, the case of uh, Rwanda, um, or it could be. So the idea would be putting together a, a set of topics. I can send you a, a, an agenda. Uh, of topics and and we can trade those to see okay maybe we can do this i, I have third organizations also uh, connected i'm member of uh the two very important una one is a uh, nazi nazi is a national association of community college entrepreneurship covers all the community college dedicated to entrepreneurship in the united states Mm -hmm. The other is INBA, that is the International, uh, formerly National, Business Incubator Association of the United States that mm -hmm. covers all the business incubators and most of the universities. 
Um, those are spaces where we can also establish common agendas and do things. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Together. And regarding the local, I, I wrote here down that one way to manage the place and the infrastructure are universities. For example, yes. the conference in Cyprus was done in the Lancaster University, University of Lancaster in Cyprus, because of course Cyprus was formerly a British colony, they still, mm -hmm. but they still will in the other side. And they have, of course, a British university. So the university put the campus to our disposal right. for, for the event. Uh, and of course, they were interested also in, in, in promoting the event, etc. So those are things we can work um, in many ways with, with common venues uh, when a local event happens. Uh, so we can save the money for perhaps bringing in uh, some key uh, keynote speaker or someone who um, could be interesting. So one, one, less, one last but additional, let me show you the Roger Kaufman Awards this year. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Um, that was one of the ways I finally worked these awards uh, because I was they, they put me as a, as the chair of the chair. committee so uh -huh. I I was able to choose pick the people so I picked Monique Mueller I picked Gonzalo Rodriguez mm -hmm. uh, Villanueva from Mexico and I picked the two Rogers from the traditional Addison and Chevalier. Uh, and <laughs> what we did, uh, I thought it was going to be a no-no uh, because it was going to be awarded to the Coast Guard. And what we did is I proposed them, okay, let's put more candidates. And then I added uh, these candidates for non-profit government, for-profit social and social startup. And that was non-profit government, okay, here's the U.S. Coast Guard, which, which already is sponsoring ISPI. But we added uh, Whole Foods with the Whole Planet, John Mackey, and Tom Shoes, Blake Nikoski. I don't know if you're familiar with Tom Shoes. No, I'm not. Tom Shoes is, uh, that, that shoe that you see there is uh, a traditional Argentinian shoe called Alparagata. It's uh -huh. used in the countryside. Uh, Blake right. Nikoski uh, made a, a couple of million dollars in the in the dot com era and decided to learn to play polo. Went to Argentina, saw that there were kids, shoeless kids, and thought with some of his friends, uh, he's in the mid thirties, to to start a, a company. But his idea was the company has to make also money. And uh, there is a, this simple shoe that is basically um, a, has a, 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 a fiber sole and is oh. a canvas. And what he did was uh, you buy one and there is another free for a shoeless kid. That goes to a child or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they, they gave uh, 600 people in Buenos Aires in a, in a, in a shanty town. Uh, work in building these shoes that are being sold in New York and now they are going to Africa, etc. etc. So, uh, all these guys, I put it, uh, and added also Nazi, Starbucks, and Barcelona Activa with the respective books. And guess what? This year, uh, the 2000 awards met, went to uh, two, three new categories one for profit. So they added Whole Planet and uh, Tom Shoes. I'm going to try to invite some of them or representatives to speak at Montreal. But the idea was to branch out from ISPI inbreeding circle mm -hmm. to companies that could be also sponsors of something more interesting. I mean, yep. Uh, for example, well, hmm? that that's that's the kind of thing that that 
gets encouraged from our perspective mm -hmm. uh, with the senior executive panel the way uh, mm -hmm. the way that we work it. So we always have a host partner, boots on the ground in in the local mm -hmm. area, except when we had partnered with Deloitte for for Ukraine, and then suddenly there was all of the political problems that we couldn't oh. <laughs> possibly have avoided. Mm -hmm. uh, so we moved to uh, Warsaw, which meant that uh, Tanya and I had to act like we were we were local. We partnered with AmCham, mm -hmm. uh, the AmCham executive director. We got uh, through her we got connections and uh and built a senior executive panel uh but the senior executive panelists are local senior executives and we right. mean senior executives not you know the director of student financial aid of uh, uh, not student financial aid not the director of personnel or training or something we we get senior people and uh but local senior people yeah, exactly. and each and every year those uh, those folks are invited to uh, to have their people come in and sit in on this senior executive panel session, but also they uh, and or one or two of their people can join the whole conference uh, complimentary. And it never fails that senior executive panelists, keynotes, simulation clients come come to the end of the conference and say, wow, this is like the best thing since iced tea. Uh, <laughs> our, our senior, our uh, simulation client last year, the uh, Istanbul Public Bus Transportation Authority, uh, just couldn't stop raving about our conference. And he, he said to me, he said, Carol, he said, you don't just talk about this stuff, you live this stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, he was so impressed that we had a feedback session at the very end of the conference. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, and those way, as you were saying, to introduce people uh, to the to the to be considered for the Kaufman Awards is is a perfect way, particularly by taking uh, organizations like. Uh, not just the Coast Guard, but the Tom Shoes that, that have a social impact mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, component to their organization's uh, overall objectives. I, that's perfect for, for Kaufman. And, you know, uh, we were really excited to have the folks from Rwanda, though we didn't know who we were going to have until the very last minute. You know, long story about that. Uh, but notwithstanding, uh, it was uh, it was great working with these people from the very beginning, uh, because from the start of our conversation with them, they were learning and they were valuing the ability to interact with us. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's that's the idea basically to. Uh, I, I thought this thing, uh, the Kaufman Award, uh, through the traditional conventional ISPI, will have a very little impact. But these are the kind of things that can help us to uh, connect with with uh, different kinds of partners. I'm, I'm showing you here some of the partners we, we are thinking of and we have worked with. Uh, here we have uh, the National Incubator Association, the uh, Amazon, the Google, uh, the Microsoft Ventures, the Chicago Boot Polsky Center, Chicago Council for Foreign Relations, Starbucks Foundation, Whole Planet Foundation, Grameen oh. Bank, uh, the uh, the Carter Foundation, Global Startups from MIT. Uh, I mean, these are all partners for different projects we have worked with. Uh, the the George the Wisconsin uh, University. Um, so the idea is um, to to put together these and start um, from now till let's say uh, end of the year. Uh, maybe make a plan together and say, okay, let's let's try to add these things, uh, plan these activities uh, that we can do together. And and move it forward as ISPI Global Wide, 
keeping ISPI informed, uh, going to the conference, and but maybe we can present in the conference also uh, some initiative that we can invite people, uh, those who are still breathing, uh, <laughs> 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 those that had, had, had uh, still escaped the taxidermist, uh, to uh, to really uh, get into this. Hmm? Right. Yeah, I, I know this year there, uh, Roger Addison and I were the, the leaders of the first community service program mm -hmm. uh, project, and it's actually still going on, but it's going on uh, because, uh, you know, pretty much because I'm putting my time into it and, uh, mm -hmm. and one of my other colleagues, uh, but uh, they're, they're they have the Kidney Foundation this year in uh -huh. Montreal, mm -hmm. and they're going to be presenting that case. Uh, uh -huh. I mean, I was a little disappointed when we did did ours because we had the client there. You know, as you always say that you know, you've always brought your clients. It's so important yeah. Yeah. to have the real client um, to, to to say what what they uh, uh, got out of it. And in our case. We we had the client and we asked them to uh, to say why they wanted to uh, to do this, why they were willing to do this uh, pro bono project. Because we all know that pro bono projects are not free. Yeah. Uh, it costs the uh, the client in their investment of of time and uh, uh, even the the potential for you know us being crazy lunatics. They didn't get to pick us. You know who were going to be on the team, and uh, you know what if we were nutcases and you know kind of got people all in a frenzy. You know? <laughs> but yeah. uh, but anyway, uh, I was a little disappointed at how many uh, how many people actually came to uh, the session, but uh, but hopefully now that we're on the second project uh, and the uh, the settlement music school project was uh, was a success. That uh, that people will become more interested uh, in the whole community service program thing because to me it's it's just taking what we do with the simulation and uh, and. Make